from Power and Faith Ministries, where Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Bates, who happens to be my mother, and who is recording me right now as we speak, they are our senior pastors, and we are located in Fairfield, Ohio. I have to say that you, Chosen Grace, I already like your face of the wall sitting there. I had to find you on Facebook, so, so don't be surprised if you get a phone call or an email sometime in the future. Hallelujah to come to Power and Faith Ministries. Oh my Because just last night, around a little after 10 o'clock, I'm coming from the rovers, I'm sitting at the red light, and all of a sudden I hear the screeching of someone's brakes, and someone slams into the back of my car. And here I am thinking that we're going to get out of the car, wait for the police to come. No, that person took off and went around the corner and left me. I didn't get, I didn't get the, the license plate number or anything, and I was just in shock. Yeah. I couldn't believe that it happened, especially because I had just bought the car. So, oh. You know, I was feeling some type of way. But then I was reminded Come on. that I was able to walk away without a scratch. Hey. Hallelujah! Yes. No weapon. No weapon for you against me. Yeah. Shall I prosper? Okay. 
God to give them love. Genesis 1 and 26 tells us that we were created in God's image and after his likeness. So that means that we are to be like God. No, we're not equal to God. And we're definitely not above God or higher than God. That would never happen. But we are to imitate God. So as children of God, or as children of love, huh, we are to give. We're talking about the gift of love. Now when I say give, what does that mean? Well, here's one definition. To give means to hand something over to someone. Or I like this definition. To freely give something over to someone. To freely, yes. It reminds me of 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. And I'm going to read the New Living Translation. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't do it, don't give reluctantly or, or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Right. Huh? So what, what the Bible is saying is that when we truly give, huh? When we truly give, we're not kicking and screaming like a kid at the, at the doctor's office who's about to get shot. No, but we're giving willingly, huh? God wants us to be willing givers. Again, we're talking about the gift of love. Love gives. Love gives freely. Love gives willingly. Please turn to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 3 through 5. Again, that is Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. We're talking about the gift of love. Verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. In other words, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others, but be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. Amen. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In other words, don't look out only for your own interests. You only worry about yourself, but take an interest in others as well. And then verse 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So as we can see from these verses, we as children of God, as believers in Christ Jesus, we are to have the same mindset as Jesus. Now, what does that mean that we have the same mindset, huh? Well, we are to love people, huh? As Jesus loved people. While he lived as a man here on earth, he demonstrated that love. Huh? We're talking about the gift of love. The stories of Jesus' life here on earth can be found in any of the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when we read about Jesus, we see that he demonstrated his love for, for his fellow man by serving them. That's right. Yes, Jesus, the Son of Man, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he served. Right. Sir, what does that mean? To work for, to wait on, to help, to tend to, to care for, to attend to the needs of someone. Jesus, when we read about Jesus, we see that he met people's needs. Huh? How did he do that? He met people's needs when he healed the sick. When he opened blinded eyes. When he enabled the crippled and the paralyzed to get up and walk. When he raised the dead, he was meeting people's needs. Jesus, we read about how Jesus was been all day long just teaching and healing and performing miracles. Just serving the people. Why? Because of love. We're talking about the gift of love. Now, another definition for serve. To minister. Yes. To minister. So, if I say that I am a minister, that I have been called by God to minister his word, then my number one focus should be to serve. Amen. And so knowing that, we all can be ministers. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stand in the pulpit or behind a podium and, and hold a Bible and hold a microphone and preach until, until fire comes down from heaven to be a minister. Check this out. 
A person can minister by just standing on the street and passing out sandwiches and hot soup to the homeless. You're ministering. You're ministering when you sit and allow your, your neighbor huh, to just cry on your shoulder because they received some, some terrible news. And you just let them cry. And you pray. And you comfort them. And you give them words of comfort. You're ministering. Jesus was the epitome of serving, of ministering. Let me tell you a story. One Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue. And while he was there teaching, he noticed a man with a withered or deformed hand. Well, since it was the Sabbath day, some of, some of the people that were in the synagogue didn't care for Jesus. And some of those people were the Pharisees. The Pharisees were, were religious leaders at, at the time. In fact, they were members of probably the, the most powerful, most powerful religious and political group at the time. Well, they had a problem with Jesus. So they're sitting back and they're watching Jesus very closely to see if he's going to heal this man on the Sabbath day. And if he decides to heal this man on the Sabbath day, huh, then they're going to accuse him. Well, Jesus, because he, he knew what they were thinking without them even opening their mouths. He brought the man up to the front, and then he looked at his critics and he said, so what is the Sabbath day really for? Is it for helping people? Is it for good? Is it for evil? What really matters? What's really important on the Sabbath day? And do you know what his critics had to say? Absolutely nothing. They made no comment. After that, Jesus told the man to stretch out his hand, and instantly his hand was healed. Now, how do you think the Pharisees and the, and the others that opposed Jesus, how do you think they reacted when they saw this man instantly healed? Were they happy for him? Huh? Did they have a change of heart? No, not at all. In fact, they, they just got even more angry, and, and they left, and immediately they went, and they gathered with some others to plot how they were gonna kill Jesus. After he met someone's needs, after he showed love, after he healed someone. Now, if you're interested, this story can be found in Matthew chapter 12, Mark chapter 3, and Luke chapter 6. These religious leaders show no love. We're talking about the gift of love. All they cared about was being right. All they cared about was proving Jesus wrong. Here was a man who had a need. His, his hand, he couldn't use his hand. Maybe the fact that his hand was withered, maybe it limited what he could do. Maybe it was hard for him to find work. And as a result, he didn't have much. So Jesus, this man walked to the synagogue. Jesus saw that this man had a need. Huh? And out of his love, he met his need and he healed him instantly. But they didn't care. But we're talking about the gift of love. And despite the fact that he knew that his haters were present, Jesus still demonstrated his love for that man by serving him and healing him. Amen. I'm almost coming to a close. First John chapter three, verses 16 through 18 say this. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. He gave up his life out of love. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. No, God is not asking us to die on the cross. Jesus did that. That doesn't need to be done again. But we are to give of ourselves. Verse 17. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? You see that they need, you have it, but you keep it to yourself. Verse 18, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Love is an action word. And God expects us to love others. The gift of love. Love gives. Love serves. Love helps. God blesses us to be a blessing. I was telling Pastor, Pastor Kathleen before the service started. I was asking her about this because it's my first time here. And, and this is this is awesome. And, and, and I praise God for you, Pastor Kathleen, and, and what's it called? The Bold Soldier Ministry, am I saying that correctly? And all of those who are here to serve. God bless you. Let's give them a hand. 
Hallelujah. This message, this message is for everyone, all ages. God says, if you have breath in your body, you have something to offer. Because giving is not just about money. It's not just about things. You can give your time. You can give a listening ear. You can give words of wisdom. And we have seniors here, right? You all have words of wisdom to offer us young, younger folks. Amen? Because you live life, you have experienced things. So, so we all have something to give. Even if it's just a prayer. Praying for your fellow man. Huh? Praying because you see someone is struggling. You may not be able to help them, but you can definitely send up a prayer on their behalf to God. Again, the gift of love. And I want to leave you with this final thought. To love and to serve others is to love and to serve God. Again, I thank you for the invitation. I pray that this message has blessed you as it has blessed me. God bless you. Thank you.